Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is the third episode of Priestess House Presents. I am welcoming onto the platform today Dawn Thompson. She also goes by on Facebook Dawn of the New Era, which I think is an amazing name that she combined her special, like her gifts for this world to help us usher in this new era, but also her name is Dawn, so her real name and I think that's lovely. Okay, Don, let me see if I can find you. We have, um, it always takes about, there she is. Oh wow, this is the quickest we've ever done. Wants to be in your video. Add. You're coming on. She's coming. Hold on. It says adding, adding, and it's blinking at me. It always takes a few minutes for us to welcome the guest on with technical. Part of part of going live is that we can't go through the troubleshoot unless we're live. So we appreciate your patience. Dawn, I'm going to try a different way. Hold. Oh. Hello. Hi, Dawn. Hi. I had to rotate my phone. It was like, mm -mm. you can't have it that way. Yeah. They, was it were you trying to do a horizontal or vertical? Um, vertical. Okay. So you had to do it horizontal? Yep. So part of these episodes is us educating the world on how to properly do the guests on Facebook Live. And I've been educating people because it's a really cool feature. I think it's a really, really, and also you can capture after you record, you can capture it and keep it as a video. So it's really nice. So I'm uploading them to my YouTube. I've had problems. I tried to do an Instagram live. They say you can do that on Instagram live. So I'm learning how to do this as I go, but I have found Facebook to be pretty it takes about 10 minutes to download an hour long video. I mean, it's a lot of data. But for the most part, it's just eases and then it goes in my download and I see it on my camera roll just like that. So, again, FYI, she has an iPhone. The best, the best is an iPhone or an iPad to do a Facebook group chat if you so desire. And apparently, it only works on personal pages and not business pages. So that is a bummer. I was like, this should be on my Dawn of the New Era page. This is where, you know, this is my page. I mean, I think I'm at 5,000 people. Yeah. So who knows who's on here? But I'm at the point in my life where I don't have to separate, right? Like who I am with, with you know, or I don't have to have different personas. Like this is my business. Page. It's like, no, this is me. So I don't know what to tell you on that. I find it strange. To me, this is a business feature as well. I don't know why they wouldn't have it on both because, yeah, I agree. you know, you're, um, I, don't, I don't know, but we're just going with the flow on these. Let's things. go with it. They'll come on a business page eventually, Facebook. I don't think this has been around very long. And honestly, Don, I stumbled into this. I was like, well, let's see this. <laughs> So I birthed my podcast during quarantine and I, I call it immaculate conception, much like my, <laughs> um, my trans stand Shakti shakedown. I look back and I'm like, did that just, just birth through me? Because I don't even remember creating it. I've been doing mine through zoom. Okay. So I record my interviews through zoom and then I put them, I put them on YouTube and I, I'm doing it on the podcast, but this is great. I'm glad to learn about this way too. Yeah, I, I've had bad luck with Zoom. It's weird. And I just don't know if it's me trying to fall in love with Zoom. <laughs> I just, I don't know. But anyway, besides with technology, us healers are trying to come in into, I call this the renaissance of the soul in the technical age. It's one of my terms of what we're doing right now because I, I personally feel at least this, that I'm being called to come out of the monastery. You know, the, the monks left the monastery, the healers left the cave. And we go back there go back. To, to regroup. It's not like we never go back. I go back. But we got to come out and we have to help the end of here to talk. And this is what this platform is all about, us coming out of the proverbial woods, the cave, bringing our medicine to 
the farmer's market or whatever metaphor you want to make of it. But uh, so this is what we're here. And Dawn is a lovely. She hosts um, a Shakti Shakedown. She, the name of her platform is called The New Era. You just jumped on. And so my first question for you, Dawn, is if you can tell us. You can talk 10 minutes or so. I know you have a long story. It's a wonderful story. Um, talk as much you want about who you are, how you become a healer, and feel called to this world. Mm. Yeah, I love that you sent me the questions beforehand. Usually when I get interviewed, they just put them at, throw them at me, and I love that too. But this gave me time to think, you know, and reflect. And I'm a very organic person, so I, it'll come differently every time. I would say my entire life has been an initiation, but the true initiation into the, you know, the Mary Magdalene priestesshood would be the first 25 years. Mm. So... You know, and it started right at birth, a really intense birth. Me and my mom almost dying from a Pitocin overdose. And then, yeah. um, you know, my mom was only 21 and she was very, you know, she, she didn't quite know what she was doing and she got married to so my dad who was 41. And they were like, they were like, oh, I don't know. You know, my mom was like, I need to be she, a true Mary Magdalene Rose priestess herself, right? Because the lineage carries down through generations. My daughter has it now. She wants to be called the Rose. I'm Rose. Um, you know, it, it, she needed to be free. And so she divorced my dad around three and that left my dad who was kind of like, Oh, I didn't really want to do that. You know, it kind of left me to myself. So I took care of myself. I rate all my brothers and sisters were already adults. You know, I was kind of the, the last child. And so, um, then my dad remarried a sociopath. So in my teachings, which they're not my private teachings, I thought so the first few years. But in the Eve and Lilith teachings, you know, women, especially in this culture, either go from being ultra femme, sugar and spice, you know, wife, caretaker Eve, to like Lilith, who's the wild one. So he married a really shadowy, dark sociopath Lilith character. She has to be blocked on Facebook or else I'd be like, hi, I'm calling you out. <laughs> um, uh, calling her out. She was cruel to children and animals, and I, you know, and, and very, very cruel. So I went under, I went into some really dark psychosis. I got to go to places in my brain that maybe most people don't get to go. So that was a, my first shamanic initiation was just torture, really, being tortured, being told, you know, that I wasn't anything, being, being, um, you know, crawling, being, you know, being held by my hair, being asked to crawl along the floor like an animal or sometimes I'd sleep with a knife under my bed because she's like I'm coming in to get you and you're oh, sleeping. Wow. So just really psychological yeah. Yes. Yeah. Deep psychological torture and no protection and no help. I go to my school, I would go to the bus driver, I would go to my mom, I would go to everyone and ask for help. And there and I really had to come up with resources, which is what I offer to people, resources inside myself with nature because there was no one coming to help me. Uh, my dad died when I was 24 and that was initiation. It was kind of early. We were sacred soul. You know, we were, we were good friends. And then the last bit of the initiation would be um, a year later, I decided to have a child and I gave birth and I almost died giving birth. Wow. So the first 25 years was just intense, compacted, trauma and you know at first I did I reached towards substances so I would say in between you know when I left the sociopathic torture house like many people would I reach to substances to try to calm my nervous system yeah. so marijuana maybe some drinking and um and so then that didn't work for me because I'm so connected to spirit it just opened the portals and you know, I was getting messages, but they were, and they were, the truth shall set you free. Mm -hmm. Don, the truth will set you free. You're not here to tap out. We need you to tap back in. Right. So I uh, put myself in an institution for about a year to heal from all that trauma, that mental, emotional, oh, wow. and physical violence, too. There was a lot of physical violence growing up. Wow. That took a lot of bravery. that. <laughs> didn't seem like a choice. I think that it, it, it's, it's pure torture to stay in suffering. I don't know how people do it. And that's my job is to go in and excavate people who are ready to get out of the suffering. You know, it's like, yeah, it, it did take a lot of bravery to keep going. I know some people don't really have the resilience to withstand um, so much torture and to not have one person that was like, 
I got your back. You know, I do my own extensive inner healing work. And I was getting some theta healing the other day from my friend Cass. And, you know, we went in and, and, and for 20 years, I've had to go in and repair layers of this trauma because it just goes so deep. And I thought, oh my gosh, when children's services were called and it was so scary, I had no one to just say, it's going to be okay. Yeah. And I did it myself, you know, I found out how to self-resource, but truly it was a very traumatic first 25 years. I've had two separate therapists say that they're surprised that I'm a functioning member of society with the level of trauma extended wow. period of time. Wow. That's, uh, I don't have any words really, I'm just about to cry. I, <laughs> thank you for doing this. Because that's what we need. Thank you. It feels like an honor when I'm not in the healing work and I'm in the, and I'm in the strength work. I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I went through so much and, and I got to, you know, it made me have so many tools. But when I'm in the layers of the healing, I'm like, oh, that was, it's, it was so hard and it's so long lasting. But truly, I've alchemized most of that first 25 years, so... I did a lot of somatic healing work. I, I did five years. I um, did um, women's embodiment leadership. I saw a EMDR practitioner um, in the treatment. I saw a somatic trauma resolution practitioner. So I really, I believe the universe sends you the healers you're supposed to see when you're supposed to see them. Mm -hmm. So if I, have a, I know you know. I know you know. <laughs> Well, I didn't, I don't mean to blindside you, but I, because I, I just want to give questions off the cuff, because I do think that what we're talking about is just very profound and vulnerable. So when I, I want women to feel safe, men, if, if, if men want to come, if people are debating, I'm like, this is for both males and females, depending on, you know, who they are, but so far it's been mostly women, it's been all women. But I did want to ask about your Shakti Shakedown, because I think this is a really neat thing. If you feel comfortable telling us about your your static dance program, it's or just it's a ceremony, really. Could you tell us about Shakti Shakedown? Sure. So my belief system, I think, I think, and you mentioned something in this about the laws of polarity, which we can talk about later. But I think most people, what I found when I was going into the world of the static dance and, um, you know, and ritual and spiritual meditation and Buddhism and all these things I've studied throughout the years, what I found is it was separated from our human nature, right? Like it's like deny thy human nature, deny thy sexuality, deny your freeness. Um, and so... The Shakti Shakedown started, that, that's what it's become, is a union of spirit and body. Mm -hmm. But it started, so I do psychic readings, right, for a living, so I'm extremely psychic. I put the life coaching in there because I have so many tools, so it's kind of a combo deal. So I was asked, every Halloween, someone gets a hold of me and says, can you do a, can you dress like a gypsy and, and do readings at my Halloween party? Sure, if you pay me enough, I'll do it. Like, cool, it's fun. <laughs> so, and I like getting dressed up. My great-great-grandmother was a mail-order bride from Hungary, and she had strong, you know, I have strong gypsy heritage, so, you know, it's like being part of my heritage. So I did readings at, and this is where it gets crazy cool, is Brothers Drake Meadery. So it's a uh, place that takes honey and turns it into wine. And it went so well, and the owners were like, we love you. What do you want to do here? And I'm at the point in my life where I'm parent, single mom parenting, building a business, um, you know, a shaman, a healer. So I'm also constantly alchemizing outside and inside. So I had a lot on my plate, and I thought, if I'm going to do anything, it's going to be dance. I'll come here, and I want to host a dance party. And this was in my um, 30s, I'm in my 40s now. This was in my 30s when dancing was life. Like it's the only way I could move out the energy and the stress of the week. So, but what crazy cool happened was that spirit started sending me songs and somehow I knew how to make this experience of a, kind of like sex, a slow build and it would be a slow build and then it has a peak and then it would have this come down 
And people, I would open, you know, I close my eyes and I go into this ecstasy, this trance, and um, and I open my eyes and I see other people are in it too. And um, someone gifted, so I've been doing that for a few years, obviously not right now. Um, I have maybe small private ones, but it became a pretty big deal. I had a festival and the vision with the festival was to get the community in raise money for Mother Earth and the honeybees. Um, but it's also, a lot, I got a lot of slack, what is it, backlash. I got some backlash for it because people were like, that's not real aesthetic dance, it's in a bar. <laughs> Do you like that accent? And I'd go, okay, well, I'm pretty sure for thousands of years we weren't dancing in a yoga studio. Um, for a <laughs> shirt. Right? I mean, come on. Or that's not real spiritual music. That had the word shake your booty in it. And I'm like, yeah, because that spirit, that's true spirit is to learn to shake your booty and bliss. So someone gifted me this book, right? Right in the middle of the Shakti shakedown when I was getting a lot of heat, like, what are you doing? This is weird. And it said in the book, it was about European bee shamanism and how women would go to these temples and they would drink honey or mead and they would dance and they would go in a static bliss and everyone would heal around them as they went to oh, oh, uh, Hello! <laughs> that's what I'm doing. That's what's happening. And, wow. um, and there's a few people who said it. Do you make mead? So the place where I did the... Um, the, the Shakti Shakedown for a couple years before I started taking it to other places was a meadery. So we were already drinking honey wine and dancing. <laughs> when I got this book, I was like, you know, that's what I mean. Like spirit will show you and it will, you know, if we get, if I get out of my ego mind, man, it's like that all the answers are there. I'm like, what is this? It takes a lot of humor to see because our modern way of things is so fractured from what you know indigenous ways and doing one with the land but it's still there it's just more funny like that like oh i mean she also by the way John lives in Columbia, Ohio. so i'm guessing this meadery i never even knew that was a word a brewery that makes mead only is a meadery i thought it was a butcher i was like oh, <laughs> you're like you're dancing in a bush hey no rules <laughs> And uh, so I'm really telling you, we had a lot of butchers. They said the butchery in the background. They, I was like, well, I don't know what they were doing at the butcher shop, but. Um. <laughs> no, 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 no. And I've since taken it to my, you know, to um, other places. And now I do them in my workshop. So if I have a day retreat, we usually oh, end the retreat with a dance around the fire. Because there's nothing like a Shakti shakedown by the, you know, outdoors. And That's where the stuff. Really that name, the, the uh, what's it called when it has that shuffle sound? Not onomatopoeia. Not onomatopoeia. What's that called? It's a shuffle sound? No, the double sound. So, sha sha. There's a word for that. Poetically, uh -huh. there's a word for that. It'll come to me when, when I'm dreaming. Very cool. Is yes. really catchy. And also, Shakti, that, that had phonetic sound to it. It's explosive. It, it's, it's empowering. It's, it's the lightning path. You know what I'm saying? So when you say Shakti Shakedown, it has that, not just the, it's not just the knowledge of the word. It's also the vibration of phonetic. It's an amazing name, Don. Like, your names are down Raba. Like, I love you. I love your names that you choose. So, thank you. Thank you for sharing that off the cuff. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, they'll come back soon, and I'm I'm driving out of Columbus when the time comes and coming in when I'm coming. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so we talked a little bit about your specialties, so let's get into more details about your offerings. As if you know, right now you're at the table at the farmers market, telling everybody what you're feeling on. I love your, you love the farmer's market. Yeah. I mean, so you're like, get my medicine to the farmer's market. <laughs> I don't like your local, I'm not a big fan of the farmer's market around here, but as I, I, I don't know. I, I feel a good like one. A good one is magic, right? Yeah, there's, but I like that idea of us coming down from the woods and coming out of the monastery and coming down and we go back. <laughs> I want to say that this week I posted, so I have a, 
I have a podcast, New Era Awakenings, and I posted, um, well, I didn't post about that. I posted on the Shaman Portal. There was this thing called the Shaman Portal Facebook group. So I work with a shaman, and I, post, I posted her. Um, she's teaching me a specific type of shamanism that isn't related to the bee called trans postures. But anyways, so, th so there was this whole thing about how people are struggling with anxiety, right? People are struggling with stress and anxiety. And so me, and this goes back to the beginning of our share together that technology is not my jam. I'm 41. We, I didn't even use it in college hardly. Like it's, you know, it's, it's not, I'm not a millennial. I'm, I'm, I'm right before I'm generation X. So I had this this plethora of knowledge and abilities, but I can't necessarily, I'm good with names, but not, I can't necessarily make it look as profound as say a 30 year old who's doing their marketing for their stuff. So anyways, I, I did make a book on my 20 years of transforming anxiety, stress, mental illness. I mean, severe mental illness, seven, you know, seven different medications, diagnoses that are now gone because I transformed. And so I'm like, I want to share this with so many people. So I made this little booklet and I'm getting ready to just self publish it, but it's on this weird thing called course craft. Cause that's what I found. And I posted it <laughs> and people said, well, if you're a sh in it, it's 11 bucks, 20 years of experience for 11 bucks. I mean, we're talking a holistic panic attack solution that works every time I was hiking out in the middle of the woods, got lost and used this technique and you know, calm. I mean, this would have been a full blown panic. And I just, I have so many tools and I put it in this package and I put it on the shaman portal page. And they said, well, how dare you? How dare you charge for that? You're a shaman. I said, listen, honey, I'm not out in the hut in the woods anymore. Yeah, I am yeah. out in the town and it must, you're not bringing me chickens and herbs in the hut. This is 11 bucks. You pay Louise, hey, 11 bucks for her book. You're gonna pay me 11 bucks. But the, but the big thing is, is that most people, you know, it's the marketing too, you know, and, and so I need to kind of work on that piece or have someone work on that because I have so much to offer. Um, but yeah, I, I just told them, I was like, you know, this times are changed. Like, and, and the old kind of like spirituality is, is separate from sexuality, such as Shakti Shakedown, where we do very, very primal dancing. It's the same with this money and healing thing. We have to be paid for our work. We have to have an energy exchange. But that was not, you know, there's still that belief. There's so much polarity and separation and old beliefs still happening that we've got to educate people on. I have, I'm writing my, um, I'm in the, I'm almost done with this book called Mary's Selling Manifesto about sovereign becoming a sovereign businesswoman and what that means. And nice. coming into a new type of symbiosis with resource-based economy. And I've been working on this for almost two years. Nice. Discernment with my own work and money. And I'm kind of getting a time to sort of shift away from the mercurial airway quality of money as shamanistic women because it isn't, we are in the earth. And so there's something important coming out of me that I want to share. But yeah, keep. Keep at it, Vaughn, because part of this, that's why I'm sort of calling it a farm market. So people understand that this is a market. <laughs> like, you know, and there's a border there. There's a healthy boundary for us. We haven't had a tribe that understands the common of the Muslim woman is taken care of. That's been wrong for so long. So we are sort of on our own, and not in a victim way, but we are here to build that taking care of them, we take care of the medicine woman, the medicine man, but in whatever the new way we are meant to be now. And like you said, it is part of educating. But I'm, I'm sort of in it. We share that. Like, we're in a weird, we're in a weird um, flux time of that. We really, we are in flux. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm enjoying every minute of the rest of the flux time. Um, so the other piece, too, what I, what I do mostly to reach the most people <laughs> is it's just readings through the phone. So what I do is I can kind of turn over here and show you my whole, my toolkit. What I usually do when I start working with a woman and a few men, because I have worked with men, um, is that I start with finding out what are your themes. So I'm, I do open up kind of the tree of records and I, and I look at the past life. I look at, 
your ancestor lineage, but I also look at your chart. What's your theme, you know? And, and what's the theme? What animal totems are you working with? What are your needs right now to get you to where you're going? Um, you know, uh, and then I have a medicine deck. So I often tell people, I know you're going through this hard relationship, but this is what you're alchemizing. This is what's coming from it. This is the medicine. So I do a general overall read, and then they're very custom. Usually, I have two sets of main people. I have the people that book with me maybe once a month, and they just want to know how's my job going, what's my husband thinking, because I can read telepathy. I can read minds if they'll let me. So sometimes, you know, when I'm doing romance and career readings, there's people that want to talk, right? Like you're annoying the annoying boss that is, you know, just not telling you what he really or she really needs. I'm the bridge, right? Sean's a bridge, the door. I'm the bridge to see as a seer. I can go in and say, oh my gosh, your boss is needing more efficiency. And then we come up with a request like, hey, I'm noticing you're needing more efficiency and I need more time and spaciousness. Can you, um, or, or, and then making a request, which we could talk about during my favorite book, which I'm excited to talk about. But um, so that's an example of maybe a career reading, love, very much like what is the, what is the purpose of this relationship? Uh, almost everybody wants it to be forever, and that drives me nuts. I'm like, nothing's forever. Do you, did you not hear Buddha? <laughs> nothing's forever. This is all so temporary. But what my work has really become is mentorships, mostly with women, some men, and, um, and it's so customized. So last year I was doing them, the year before, a group of 12 women, we would, we would um, mostly all online through Facebook, we'd have a private Facebook page, I would take them through the initiation rites, and then on the side, Monday through Thursday, customize, um, you know, a talking with them, just being there to hold their hand, to be the mother Mary, the nurturer, the listener. Um, and then I would also set them up with a month long foundational spiritual practice, movement practice, uh, did these different sets of practices that fit with their life that could get them to go where they're going. So mm -hmm. I don't know where that one's going. Uh, because I've been taking a break with that one and doing just private customized ones. So it's a similar dynamic, but I usually talk to once a week, people get practices for my ginormous toolbox, you know, um, customized for them. And I never had the same person have the same set of things that they need to do in order to evolve. Everybody, and sometimes because I speak from the truth sayer, and not from, I don't remember what I say. It's just straight from their guides, straight from the oneness. Um, so I have to write it down. So I can, on our next call, I'm like, okay, you are working with your ancestor nine year, or nine generations back. Oh yeah, she's Native American. She wants corn and she wants the, she's teaching you this chant. What's happening during these custom mentorships as well is ancient information is coming through. For example, today, um, I'm working with one of my clients, her guides kind of yelled at me, she has to hurry up with her work. We are on the illuminated path. So there's two paths right now we can go on. You know, my teacher calls it the sorting, the indigenous out west, you know, they, they have the, the markings and the rocks of the sorting. We're in it right now since 2012. You can either, you know, you have, there's two paths. One's heaven, one's kind of hellish. And so I was like, you have your guides was like, she's on the heaven, the illuminated path. We've got to get her going. Um, so I got kind of feisty with her today. And then I also have my, um, my retreats. So I have a couple of those coming up where people can work with me in person. Right now they have to be outdoors um, or at the salt cave, the Himalayan salt cave. I also work in there. <laughs> So right now it's pretty much private mentorships. I'll probably go back to group memberships once we can gather again, you know. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't seem to specialize. I really need to not have that many generations back. And would you consider that the Akashic? I was just introduced recently, and when I mean recently, the last, I can't remember the exact day, but six to 12 months, what the actual Akashic dimension is and I just I was I was tapping into some Akashic stuff still am from Babylon 
a lot of Babylon, a lot of Babylon, a lot of these. Things. In our last names, Archangeli, the Melchizedek, Maji is the Magi, and Mari is Mother Mary, the Hebrew name prior to the patriarchal Judaism, Mari. All roads lead not to Rome, to Babylon, <laughs> to the uh, Middle East. So, yes. I I now understand that that was heavily Akashic, and I thought it was also ancestral. I think it's both. So it's interesting that you said that because I feel like that's the soul. But you said you know nine generations back, so it's ancestral, but it's also very cosmic. It is so multidimensional, and we are very capable of that. Do you experience that when you does it feel that way to you when you tap into that, like you're connected to the earth and to the into this cosmos? I don't feel much because I disconnect from myself. I, the latest podcast about, with my teacher is the shamanic death and rebirth one. And, hope, you know, what, after so many shamanic deaths, you don't want to be feeling much into other people's stuff. It's yeah. just you become yeah. a clear place. The nine generations back is because what I found the more I'm working with women is that that seems to be the, just like right now, we're the generation that's changing you know, through communication, through our energy. I mean, we're the ones that are going to be the new era, leave the old era. But the old era started about nine generations back. And so what the grandmothers from that generation have told me is that that's when we became detached from, as you said, the earth-based living, our connection with earth. And we began to, you know, through an... Um, you know, all these things. It's basically when we went from hunters and gatherers. So I want to own land. I want to conquer. I want to own things that aren't really mine to own. And then what happened was, you know, religion came in and, and demonized our bodies and our sensuality. And we, we, um, you know, we became so separate. We wanted to own things. We forgot how to work with the earth and it just got worse and worse and worse each generation. And it's like, now we're going to spiral back up. So when we contact that grandmother, um, you know, through a shaman, or if you have the ability to work with your ancestors, when you work with that ancestor nine generations back, you can call her in to help remind you what it was like to, um, to live in that way. And they can teach you through dreams, through just remembrance, through intuition, and so it's very important we work with the ancestors around nine generations back. They're waiting. They're just like, we got information for you. And like me, I live in um, North America. And there's also a plethora of Native American spirits who are like, are you ding-dongs ready to listen now? Like, we're ready to teach you. <laughs> and I think it's so sweet because they're not mad. Like, I, I, I'm sure there are some angry spirits on certain parts of our land. But the ones that I work with, they're like, we just, we love Mother Earth, and we just want to show you what's up. Are you ready? And so I've been working with a few um, that are teaching me certain ways of being that are fairly ancient on these lands, which is cool. That, that is. And, and, you know, you know the study of epigenetics, which is the fancy word for what we're talking about. So neuroplasticity and neuroscience, okay? So we are at this convergence right now of science and spirituality. So as we talk about this, which might sound woo-woo to a lot of people in this world. Let's bring in the science! I know. This, I know. I'm more of a spiritualist, too, and I don't need scientific. I've noticed I don't need it very much. Oh, but a lot of people do. <laughs> But a lot of people do. So yeah. I try my best to put stuff on some certain things. But they, I, if you'd like to learn more of the science side to back up what she's, what her gifts are, but they've been able to show that in our DNA, we can hold up to even, it depends on the study, 17 generations back in our blood wow. in our in our DNA. And I mean we know that energy happens. So to me there's a rebirth effect that happens in our generations as we go down the line. And um reverberation is one of my favorite words. So yeah, check out epigenetic epigenetics is, if you haven't heard of that yet. Neuroplasticity is where they are working more in the science background back or, Backdrop is the word I'm thinking of for what my specialty is. Oh, my mom would be so happy with you. She's a, she was an <laughs> analytical chemical warfare agent. She is so scientific. <laughs> it's taken me years for her to believe in any of the she – she's that exact term, woo-woo. She'd be like, oh, my woo-woo daughter. But as times went on, she's like, 
Yeah, you're the one that figured out how to get there when we were lost. So I'm starting to believe in this stuff. Or, you know, as my grandmother, her mother was dying, you know, she saw how I was able to work with spirit. And through time, she was like, okay, I, I, I believe. <laughs> it took a long time, though, for that, for that woman to believe. And I think the biggest thing was when Harvard recognized Reiki as legit. And she was like, okay, which was one of my certifications. And she's like, Okay, if Harvard believes, then I'll believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. okay. Let's see. I don't know when you're... I can talk for hours. Um, and so, so I think you already answered this. Who do you feel most called to serve? It's mostly, you said women and some men. You serve mostly women and people that are looking to transform their... Maybe their wounds there if you'd like to elaborate a little bit more on that you know who do you feel most called most it seems to be i was recently trying to work with a business coach and um and that was the question you know who's your demographic and you know me going through so many different things in life i ha i can help a lot of different people mm -hmm. um but even as I was journaling, because you asked me these amazing questions, I was kind of journaling on it. I don't, I, I can only help people that have been busted open, you know? So I think there's two different kinds of life coaches. There's probably thousands, but there's the kind yeah. that usually millennial, but they have great marketing. They're amazing. And they're here to tell you what to do. You know, you're, you're going to do this three times a week. And you're going to do that. And then you're going to become spiritual. And you're going to heal. And then there's me who people come to me like, okay, I'll give you an example of my October mentorship. Two women had children that had died. One woman had a husband in hospice. Mm. I mean, we're, one woman's mother was dying. Like, I don't work with people who are like, I just got out of college in my fifth grade. Boop, 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 boop. I love them and I envy them, but I don't know anything about what that's like. Mm. I, work with, <laughs> I work with people who either have really intense gifts and I'm here to hone them in right? I'm here to prepare them. They're probably going to go through that shamanic death and rebirth in the future. So I get to give them the tools ahead of time. They're, they're, there's so many young women thirsty to learn, you know, how do I talk to my ancestors? How do I, you know, why, what are fairies real? And, da, 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 you know, and then, and then there are a set of people that I work with demographic. That's just like life just kicked my but or I'm I'm struggling with anxiety every night. Um, I don't know how to be my real self, but I'm ready. I'm ready to bust out of society. So I would say those are my main demographics. It's people serve seeking spiritually or people who have been wounded or suffering and need tools or um, shamanic journeys. Um, I was doing forever. I was doing this journey that I thought, again, I thought I made up, just like the even Lilith practices. I thought I made that, it up. And then I recently found out it's an ancient Toltec shamanic journey that I've been doing for the last five years with people. Um, it just got downloaded, right, from the, from the cosmos. But, um, and that's really helpful for grief. So I work a lot with people who are grieving. And grieving right now, we're all freaking grieving. Everyone's grieving. Our whole yeah. Yeah. life is gone. Um, and, and boundaries and communication are other platforms that I like to help with that demographic as well. I, I'm having the same thing with that target audience. Like, all, I, all I know is the ones that want me to find me. Yeah. You know what I tell the people? I'm like, I'm... It's a new paradigm. I'm making the target audience. I don't know what it is. So I love that. Yes. Yes. Well, and I said... When I was journaling, after you asked me that question, I said, I want to serve, and I said all, but sometimes I don't want to serve people. If they have any resistance, now I'm learning that maybe that's not the best for me, but I want to serve all people who are craving depth and authenticity and alchemy, you know? Like, just, I want to just, like, <gasps> move when I say that, like, deep. Like, I want to get deep with people. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, those who are who are in play, you know, or those, you know, you can't help those 
who don't want to help themselves, you know, you can lead them to the water, but they can't really drink that, you know, time. Yes. And we've been forced to do a lot of things in, under the community we've been. So if we're used to that behavior, we're used to being in school, so what to do, and our parents, you know, that's, so we're now freeing you of that, but it's a new feeling for a lot of people. So I, I, um, yeah, I'm still in the middle of mine too. So I appreciate, I, that is such a, authentic answer it really it really is an authentic in the business world isn't like that at all <laughs> uh, can i speak to the fact that in business like i i know so this one of my friends was recently like i think i'm gonna work with a somatic spiritual embodiment coach and her first call with this woman was you should you should be telling your boyfriend this you should be doing that what do you and i i told her i said you want to work with someone who is going to teach, this is from the Bible, teach you how to fish, not try to throw you fishes. You know, you want to be able to choose what fish you want, what waters, and you want to, you know, and, and, and I think most, and a lot of, there's a, this, this move over for people like you and me who are like, we're going to be organic and teach you how to do it yourself. Because the old era was, I mean, we've been primed since, you know, kindergarten. Sit down, be quiet, do this, do this at this time. And, and I've watched children, you know, I've volunteered a lot with children as my daughter's um, grown up in school, and they lose their organic movement and voice around fifth grade. So women's confidence peaks at age 10 in America, and you can see, I could see it volunteering. It's like these little feisty, I know what I want, I know what I want to do, this is how I'm going to move my body, this is what I want to eat, and I don't want to eat, to... Yes, sure, eat that. I mean, we've been primed to listen and obey. Um, and that comes from monarchy, from certain, you know, living under monarchy for so many years. Our, talk about the epigenetics and the ancestor. You know, we've just been primed to behave and listen. Yeah. we got to let go of that. Yeah, we gotta, that's that's what we're helping them do. I feel too, like just an old fashioned unplug from these parasitical attachments. I call it like a mother hub that's rotten, you know, like or you know, you know, there are so many dogmas, and people just they don't realize that there there's so many dogmas. It's not just a religious thing, you know. There are so many rules, and yeah, we are. It's funny, my my sons are in fourth. They're about to go. Well, who knows what school's going to be like next year? <laughs> <laughs> they're changing the whole system, which is a good sign. So um, they're going to be in fourth and third grade here come fall, unless I don't know they change grades. And <laughs> I don't know. What's <laughs> I really We're going to be doing school, school on a spaceship this year. <laughs> I, I know my sons are because you know they're still in that stage where they they have their you know like you said they haven't quite hit fifth grade. But they're so used to being told what am I in? What am I? And I said, boys, there's, I don't know when you're gonna start school. I don't know what you're gonna learn. I don't know. <laughs> said, it's we don't know. That is the truth. That is the honest answer. So, okay. So my next question is: We are coming into a consciousness of unity rather than separation. Some people call this 5D unity consciousness and separation 3D, and um, some people call that Newtonian physics, which is the, the, you know the teachings of Newton at the 3D level and the teachings of quantum fields at the 5D level. There's lots of different things to call it. And uh, let's go with the science. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so science. What does this mean to you? Well, so I have training in clarity therapy. So I get the law. And this planet is a planet of what goes up, must come down, hot, cold, tall, short, big, fat, like, you know. And I, I think what that means, what I see is just trying to find a bridge between the unity. I don't think this planet's going to unify in our lifetime. No, me neither. I don't think we're going to go to 5D consciousness next year. Um, we got a lot of freaking work to do, right? We got a lot of work to do before mm -hmm. that. Pe once people can get, can switch from... A and B, it's A or B, and if it, once people can find C, D, E, F, G, once people can find a bridge between, you know, either, let's go with the times now, It's right? We have two different kinds of people, majority-wise. We have ones that 
wear masks, won't leave their home, are deathly afraid, or are you know in denial. Part of the grief process of a pandemic, say, is in denial. This is a this is a lie. This is a conspiracy theory. I'm going to do whatever I want, whenever I want. There's very few, you know, like for me, I'm like, I'm going to use my intuition and be safe. I'm not going to be in denial and, and get my mouth up on, in everybody's face. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to play it safe, but I'm going to find that middle road, that middle path. That's going to be 5D consciousness is finding the middle path that it is. And this too, and this too, and this too. So instead of saying, oh my gosh, so here in Columbus, Ohio, sometimes I watch the two o'clock governor's reports and people are so again polarity how do we unify the people that are like he's hard we have this wonderful lady called dr acton it was like our medical lady and people are either like she had to quit because she was getting death threats from the all or nothing people who are so far away from 5d consciousness so they're like you're doing this to us you're bad you made disease you are hurting at like the small little children that the way we're going to get to 5D is people need to grow the F up. They need to do the alchemy work to get maturity and to heal their wounds and stop projecting on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, but then we have the other people who are, who are just like, they know everything, they're doing great. And it's like, what if it's both, right? What unity is both? It's all of it. What if it is, you know, I mean, if we look at like the pandemic, people are like, it's either good or it's bad, it's right, it's right, you know, it, what if it's like, yeah, I can see this coming from it, like spending more time with family as shamans get to go back to the hut and breathe, <gasps> take a breath, um, you know, spend more time with our kids, we get to redo education systems, and we've lost so much, right, like, so a lot of my clients are like, how do I date in this, um, you know, there, there, there's just so much, um, there's so much to every situation, to every person. People aren't good, bad. Things aren't good, bad, right or wrong. If we want to unify and go to 5D consciousness, you have to see this journal and not see it as, you know, oh, that journal's too small or it's too big. It, it, you have to look at things as it just is. And it's a lot of things. And unified consciousness, 5D consciousness is about being playful and about, you know, rather than judging. As long as people are judging things, I often say a banana, you know, a banana isn't good, bad, right, or wrong. Someone who's allergic to that specific fruit is going to die. Someone with diabetes who needs a little sugar, it's going to give them life. We have to stop looking at things and putting so much judgment on it if, in order to unify, to unify, um, and to create systems that that aren't so separated that's what it means to me i mean it all started right around the industrial revolution we got these nuclear family families we and, and, and it became i i i i i my house my car my kids my pets my and it's who's really happy with that who is that made truly happy few people because it's not all or nothing <laughs> um a few people it has but we long for community. That's how we unify. We long for farmers markets. We long for, um, you know, the big thing in the fall is if kids don't go back to school, that was our entire village to raise a child. I don't know about you, but I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my gosh, like if I don't have, if, if our children don't have our village, what do they have? Um, so yeah, we have a long way to get to that, that 5d consciousness because we are still in the breakdown and we're going to be in the breakdown for about four years. Yeah. Yeah. So I think hopefully that too. I, yeah. I, that's my, my kids, my kids are out of the house. My youngest will turn 18, 10 years now. I do not, and I'm still 40. I do not oh, think that's okay. I, I was like, ah, oh, big time with that. That's um, my son was 2011, 2012. So, and this is before I was awake. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I thought a lot about this and, and just cycles and everything and timing and um, I love your answer to unity consciousness. It's not, it, it is, it's, it's a 
paradox, but you can't always live in a paradox here. That's what I'm also learning is sometimes you do need to choose a side. And that's even a paradox of itself. But I can't really, you know, because then it's tricky. It's tricky. And that's when that unplugging of your own, of all these dogmas comes into the importance so you can hear the channels of your own fruit. And, and you can choose a side, but still not think that your side's the only side. Right? Like yeah. it's the right yeah. side because it's the side yeah. I chose. I just want to add that in there. Yeah. It is. Yeah, because, you know, some of us, um, reality is still we live in the individual existence. And the, to, to deny that to me is a fallacy. It's an illusion. And you can live in that for a long time. And I think there's a lot of movements, I, I think a lot of, um, the movements of positivity, a lot of toxic positivity is that. They don't want to, they don't, like you said, they don't want to unify. They just want to, uh, you know, you can also offer up the other side of, um, I'm trying to think of, I always feel like Kurt Cobain was the epitome of the sad victimhood of You know what I mean? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of it, and uh, so, yeah, but for me, I've had these conversations with politics and religion, and, and we don't need to get into that depth there, but there is a point where you do need to normally pick a side, not always, but also have what is tolerance, you know? We don't have to get into that either in this talk, but what, to me, a lot of times I to be tolerant is that we coexist. And oh, I love that. We, without attacking one another. We yeah. may disagree, though. And, you know, it's that terrible thing. You agree to disagree and just kind of sit in that. That's unity. And that's a, that's a tough thing. So our egos don't like it. That is for dang sure. But our souls don't care. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> our souls are like, yes, this is what we came here for. I know. So, but our egos do live here, you know, and our egos are as part of our individual gifts. So yes. I'm kind of coming into that, and I feel like a lot of spiritual movements don't talk about a healthy ego, and they're just like, the ego will do this, the ego will do that, the ego will do this, and they go, there's, we have an ego for a reason, and honing in those gifts as our, you know, what, I'm coming into that, you know, that's that solar plexus, so part, I just, as we're talking about unity consciousness, we're not saying to live in never making a decision or a choice. You will, eventually the fork will come to the road, and bless the other path as you go on, you know. I love that. You know, that's a good point. So, good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Yes, that you can say, I love bananas, and you hate them. It's fine. We can still play together. <laughs> but I'm going to take banana route, and maybe we'll meet up at the oranges stone road. I don't know. No, yeah. like and I still have more work with that. I mean, you could hear my hint of judgment at the, you know, I, 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 I love the fusion of our ego, our humanness, and our um, spiritual side so much. To me, I believe that's what Yeshua and Mary Magdalene did, is they found this unification of, um, and, and, you know, in the 80s is when the self, actually the first self-help guru was in 1870. I just read about that. But, you know, the 80s, I remember my mom was in this big self-help kick, become perfect, become better, both that fit. Or you know, help your heal your heal your inner child. We're not going to heal our inner child. We're going to alchemize it. Removing the word healing, perfecting, becoming this whole thought that we're gonna we're gonna be like Buddha and meditate for forty days and become enlightened. Not in the flesh. Probably not in the flesh. Maybe a few people do, but the closest we can get to it is to truly love and honor and. Um, be okay with our humanness to be mm -hmm. okay with our humanness you know i teach my people when i coach them okay so you ate that whole plate of brownies last night you can wake up and say piece of crap gotta go on a cleanse blah 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 or you can look <laughs> at yourself in the mirror and you can say you were a human you were extra human last night you didn't get you human being I mean, what if the world did that? What if the world was like, instead of being like, my body functions are bad, my blah, blah, blah is bad, or my hair is bad, what if we were like, super imperfection, human right here, gonna rock it. Like that will freaking get us to the fifth dimension quicker than anything, I think. 
You know I what I mean? Fudge from Killman's on like two days. I definitely <laughs> said I did. I I was like I love this fudge. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bless it. Well, I mean, I gave the quarantine fifteen, and I was like, okay, okay. No, I'm noticing not a lot of my friends did, but I did. And then I was like, well, let's rock it. You know, I still work out. I still do. You know, I'm still very active, but it's here. It might be 40s. I don't know. But I'm like, I hear that little voice. It's like, you aren't going to be the one who's spread out in their 40s. What's going on? Blah, 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 blah. And then this, and then I go, oh, oh, Dawn, you, you've been through so much and you Gain some weight to protect yourself because you're human and it's beautiful. And we're going to get some new dresses to rock these curves, you know? Like, there's, two, there's, there's different ways to go with that. There's a model called Miss Fred Lawrence. You can even resemble her. She's blonde and British. If you follow her, oh. she talks a lot about her perfect perfectness. And she went through all the anorexia as a model growing up and then came into her full-fledged womanness. And she she isn't she's a model. She's not like a full-fledged spiritualist. She doesn't really fall on that platform. So it's neat to get a huge follow. Okay. okay. So you want you were excited about sharing your you know what you're reading right now or what's really inspired you i'd like to give people other um sources of knowledge that they that has inspired you and you know for them to check out for themselves so they want to learn more okay whoop, 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 whoop. i'm so excited my favorite thing that i found in the last six years other than my sangha practice um, you know, in the metaphysical world, I started reading, gosh, when I was 25, I started reading Psychic Sylvia Brown, and then I read the whole metaphysical section, the whole metaphysical <laughs> section at Half Price Books. I probably owned it all at one point, but then one day I found Marshall, this is the workbook, Marshall Rosenberg's Nonviolent Communication, and then okay. my mind got blown. Then my mind got blown, and I've been studying it. For six years, I just finished last night my gratitude um, chapter with my group. Now, I use the, the decks from the book. So the book has these decks of feelings and needs. Okay. So Marshall Rosenberg's theory was, right, PhD. Um, he was a psychotherapist, I believe. And then he started this move, the NVC, Nonviolent Communication Movement. Because what he found was there are 47 universal, all over the world, every human being has them needs. And when they're not met is when people go, that president is doing this wrong and this is how, you know, that's when people get angry or sad. You know, like a lot of people on that feed I was telling you about when I watched the government's feed and the report daily, they're needing... Marshall Rosenberg might say, maybe they're needing a sense of safety. Maybe they're needing some structure. Maybe they're needing to know, you know, they don't know. There's so many needs that come through when we don't, when we're upset. Yeah. And, um, and then feelings too. Most people don't know how they feel. I, um, I guarantee you, most people, if you ask them how they feel, they're going to tell you a belief system. How do you feel when you went on that car ride with so-and-so? Well, they just, I believe they should have blah, blah, blah. I said, I felt really uncomfortable because the person I was driving with was crossing my boundaries. And what I really needed was some quiet. And I was feeling very creative. And I had this need to express through poetry. But this person, you know, had the need, and it's not about dissing the other person, but this need had a person to really connect and share. And so they had conflicting needs on that car ride. And they were, you know, and so the, the purpose of studying NBC is to find out it's not about being right or wrong. It's literally the communication of the new age. It is about unifying and, like you said, allowing someone to say, I have this banana because it does this for me, and I don't ever want to be near a banana because I don't, because of this need is met by not having the banana. It's such powerful work. I, I wouldn't be in my relationship for six years without um, this book, which I first got on audio. 
Then I got the cards, which again, Spirit gifted me the cards. I thought that was funny. I love cards. We, they're so, they start, they, they add the body. You know what I mean? They add the body. Yeah. We only started getting into tarot last year, and I felt like I was a great center. Oh my God. Here, when I look at the cards, I'm like, they're Italian. This came from Italian. Every picture is from Dante. I studied Dante's Defined Comedy when I was in college, because I'm a complete dork and major in Italian and basically studied Dante for four years. I'm like, every picture. It's Dante. This is Dante. Oh, yeah. this tarot is Italian, and I'm sitting here like, oh, Italian. I get it. So yes. 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 You know, when I first started giving readings for people in 2012, I used a lot of decks. Now, I, in order to see, I close my eyes and I just see. But, but these particular decks are more to work. I mean, we want to make systemic change right now, right? Like being woo-woo-y, as we call it, is great. But we need to make systemic change fast in school. So say, you know, if, if – like, there was one little girl when I was volunteering this year before her 10th birthday, I'm sure, because she still had her voice, and she knew what she needed. But like we talked about earlier, right now, most people have been crushed. They do not know what they need. They do not know how to make a request. They're making a request like a little baby. And when you study NBC, you know, it's about making a request that brings more life to you. Or, you know, we just did, I'll, I'll focus on the chapter of, gratitude because that's what we just did so like normally i would say say my daughter cleaned her room and she um you know her room was clean i would instead of saying good job thank you i like that right that's how most people would say it once you study nbc a little bit you learn that maybe there's more to that maybe i could go in and say I am so great. I feel relaxation in my entire body. And I feel so grateful right now because you met by you cleaning your room and met my need for more time to do things I want and rest in my body because my body has been doing so much. And when you did that, I met my need for order. Everyone has a need for order, right? You you allowed that to, to happen. And so by being more specific with people in offices and schools and friendships and relationships, lastly, I'll give you the example of how NBC saved my relationship. My boyfriend brought home a dog, a huge one, a pit bull, which was so cute and so sweet. It had a big head. And you heard my story at the beginning of growing up in violence. So this dog... You know, it would headbutt me, it would scratch me, it would growl at me at times, and I really was totally back in my PTSD. I was totally back in my trauma, and every time I come to my boyfriend and say, I, I'm scared, I'm triggered, we have to get rid of the dog, he would say, the dog doesn't know what it's doing. The dog's innocent. And so, almost on the daily, we come across these conflicts, right? You want, you want to talk about unification, we just could not find the middle road path. So we did what's called the empathy walk, which again goes into the, the judgment, the feeling, the need, and then a request. And basically what happened was, I found out that I was scared because I had a need for safety, and my request was to adopt the dog, you know, we were fostering, adopted out. This is very sweet. I love ending with this. And so as my boyfriend did the NVC empathy walk, you know, he was feeling sad because he had a need to nurture another living being. Now, both of our needs were super, super, you know, they were super legit. And I was about to leave this dude if he didn't get rid of the dog. Yeah. You know, it was in our first couple of years of relationship. But because of this new era language, that Marshall Rosenberg downloaded from the future for 5D consciousness, we were able to go, oh, oh, I get it now, and um, get a smaller dog to nurture. Yeah. yeah. Or a plant. No, I love dogs, too. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I love my dog. That's 
an extreme so, case of people saying, you know, we may not want to go all the way to schizophrenic dog. I don't know where uh, I'm not saying this one was, but they're more driven. And I have noticed that pitbulls can often come out with a lot of trauma because they're abused. They're a very abused breed because they're so unhappy. So I've noticed that. Oh. But they are they're right for a lot of people. So right. you know, it's really intense. Um, they're they're ideal for someone who has a lot of time to nurture an animal. They're ideal. And yeah. I adopted a pit kind of pit mix, and he was a very special healer that came in my life, and. and I uh, learned a lot, but that was what I also learned. And I love my cat. <laughs> and I love my cat! Yes! I love my cat because the are, like, are very small compared to what a lot of people <laughs> So much because we're there for each other, but we're very independent women. And I, I was like, this is exactly what I need right now because I, I love having them around, but a really, an animal that, there's nothing wrong with me, but an animal that needs a lot, needs to be a lot, you know, it's a very serious thing. If that's not me, like you said, if it's not flowing with what you need at that time. So, right. Um, Someone else might have a ton of time and have a need to really nurture they might have a need for let's think of the pit bull they might have a need for protection they might have a need to and to to nurture to spend a lot of time with an animal and your need is you know i i need something that's low maintenance because i have a lot you know i have a lot going on and i really value how ease how useful my relationship is with my cat and it is very cool everybody. i have the greatest cat on earth and i just i never grew up with her and i love her Really, and I, I, we, we have. She's a very nurturing, mothering cat as well, and so she mothers me and my boys too. So I'm not alone in the mothering, part, and she releases a little bit of that. that so I get, so, yeah, she's a really special, special being. So her name's Gladys. Did you, did you get the new dog yet? Oh my gosh, we've had them. This was a long time ago. We've been together. Oh, this is the beginning of our relationship. Yeah, I have a Nico the Heart Dog on Instagram if you want to follow him, and he's uh, he's he's about twelve pounds. Yeah, I do. He's so cute. So he's from Miko M I K O the Heart the Heart Dog because he's a heart he's a heart dog. He heals hearts. For sure. He, oh, I swear to God, this little guy added another chamber to my heart. There he is, a little, little slushy. I'm done. I'm a, a new thing now. I'm going to go pick your Instagram account. We're going to we're gonna sell you at the market here. Follow me, go heart dog here. <laughs> and if you are looking for, okay, if you're looking for my Instagram, it's Dawn of the New Era, but there's two, so mine is with underscores. So if anyone out there wants to follow my Instagram, it's Dawn underscore of underscore the. There we go. <laughs> She's got it. I love your yeah. beautiful Phoenix picture. I, I love your, your, your look and your blonde hair. I, uh, I like the stark different ends of the spectrum in our hair, but it's a fierce, like fierce blonde, fierce dark. Fierce <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Too. As I've come in more to who I am, I'm, I'm very like, my mom can't believe it. My mom goes, that's not your real hair. I go, oh no, my hair is very dark, mom. I am scared. <laughs> oh, and she's like, no, it's not. I go, oh no. Oh, no. Which it is. is probably Mary Magdalene look like. I mean, I'm, I'm at this point where I really, she, you know, she was a Jewish woman. That one. Yeah. Is, um, so, anyway. And I, if you notice too, I'm very pale. And the stereotype of Italians being really dark skin, my mom is, but there's also really light. And, um, a lot of Middle Easterners are very light skinned. A lot. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. Are very light skinned. And I have, you know, anyway, but I love that picture. Love that. Okay, so Miko, we have Miko the heart dog. I just love that. I think I want to put a cat. I might do a gladi Instagram. I didn't even think to do that. I, and he's that. best friends with our cat. He is best friend. He is, he is so sweet. Yeah. He's my little totem animal. Aww, that's so sweet. So it all kind of it all worked itself out. And I love this book. I'm going to get this book. And I 
and ten, it's funny that what you're all bringing up because these are sort of what I've been trying to implement, but I'd never heard of this book. And you know, the word nonviolent. So what's really interesting is I have found when my ego and I get defensive that the that what my body is trying to tell me is that I feel violated. Mm. And that, but it, that's kind of the word of saying that my needs aren't being met. So I'm violated. I'm violated. And um, I have been using that with my kids about owning those. Books. It's only been the last week or two. So I'm going to go out and, get a book and work on this with my children. I, um, I'm excited. Thank you for sharing that. I didn't, I didn't know about, um, I, I did not know about this. I studied linguistics too. That was my background. I studied all different types of linguistics is all about phonetic syntax and semantics so it's not it's more um data driven than it is psychologically driven wow and i didn't know that yeah so a lot of people it's not communications and but this seems like both it seems like a bridge of unifying really what you're saying is non-violated communication really it's non-violence a lot of people think violence is physical but a lot of times are right very yeah. and because we are feeling violated those semantics those are the same word those are the same root so it, you know what's interesting so my one of my is that I'm, as you get to know me more dawn like i i Violante also means violet, and it also means violet flame. So it's it's alchemy. It's asking you. The word is asking you to transmute it. As that's cool. I get tingled. I'm like, oh, I, I, yeah. That's what they, they're talking a lot about. I'm really into names and words because behind the word always has a strong message to us. In the, in the phonetics and in the semantics and in the syntax, which is my why I got it. That's your jam. That's your jam. I have a couple friends who are really into it. I learned that you know, so when you say, I try never to say I'm sorry because the word sorry has the word sore in it. Sore. I was like, what I thought? I was like, no. Hey, I wanted to let you know that I'm kind of winding down and my back's hurting from sitting, so okay. I was thinking we could, if we could close. That's it. That's the last <laughs> Thank you for honoring me. Of course we will. Guys, I will I'm gonna post this on and I'll tag her in her um in her her social media tags. And, and we'll go from there, Don. And I thank you for coming on to this house and sharing your soul and your great experience with us. Oh, I want to show you something. Okay. I got this custom made. It's gonna be backwards, but it says priestess. Aww, <laughs> priestess, I work for the priestess house. Thank you so much for having me. It met my need to be seen for who I am. It met my need to connect with a like-minded person who's so non-judgmental and so high vibrational. I mean, these are judgments that I'm I'm judging you by saying you're high vibrational, but. <laughs> In my perception, you just, um, you're very kind as well. And that's something that I just, re you know, I got to, because we haven't got to connect a lot, but that's what I was noticing during this is your, your kindness. It's, it's really touched my, touched me. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I can talk more, but I want to let you go. I have a really hard time shutting up. <laughs> we can have a part two sometime. Come back to Please do. That, this isn't limited to one thing, so. No biggie. Okay. Well, thank Ciao, you. Bella, thank you again. Bye. Have a good day. You too. Bye, everybody. Thank you.